gave a lecture in 1962 in California. And uh, the other part was actually somebody reading his letters and his sort of written comments. And so it was a mixture, it's half and half. I hope you have some other questions. <laughs> I will try to answer them. I'm sorry I have an accent. <laughs> yeah, for a long time I didn't realize I had one. <laughs> Question is how did I become uh, aware of the story? It's uh, Yuda and Claudia, uh, they are family friends. Claudia is basically best friends with uh, my parents. And Yuda I never met actually until uh, we began this project. And um, but you know, as you can perhaps realize, if immediately you meet Yuda and within one or two minutes you think you're a friend. And so that happened for me three years ago. Um, but that was quite an extraordinary story. My mother was petrified of course, but also very brave uh, and decided, as she told me when we came together, that she would not ever speak. She went for the entire uh, uh, seven and a half months without speaking. She refused to, and I think it saved her life because uh, when you know her situation, it was extraordinary that she was put, moved from her first prison to the second prison and was not put into the Jewish part of the prison, but into the part that was uh, filled with people from France and from all the countries that Germany had moved into and uh, people that didn't please her. And because she never spoke, I think she was saved. They thought, or they must have thought, that she was completely gaga and out of it and useless and, and didn't pay any attention to her anymore. It was completely incomprehensible to all of us how that was possible because she was the only one of us who had a dismission charge in her hand. We were all let go and anybody could have killed us because we could not show that we had been in a prison. But my mother was the only one who came home with one. I still have it. Oh, uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm, this, I'm, I'm 19, <laughs> obviously very old, <laughs> and slightly decrepit, and I don't live very well. So I don't see for my daughter what you really want to do here, I'm sorry. Um, uh, she uh, got out, she was called in, uh, was given in a very rough voice, as I found out later, of course, that uh, she was discharged, she was, this was pressed in her hand, uh, took as uh, people uh, moved her out of this building, and there she stood uh, in her, uh, an old lady, uh, very weak, not knowing what to do. She had no money. Uh, uh, she had uh, this uh, piece with her dismissal in her hand and was holding it tight, not to lose it, but obviously that was not a very good thing to show where she was. And she was in this uh, place uh, which was uh, run over at that time by refugees from the eastern German provinces who were trying to get away from the Russians. And uh, completely helpless there she stood when suddenly, of all people, two SS officers, the worst of the lot in general, I would say, talked to her and said, can we help you? We have a car. And Mummy, as for the entire time, did not answer. She stuck with it. But she was frantic, she told me. And because she didn't say anything, the other thought this is a poor uh, woman, not all together, which was true in power. Uh, they picked her up. 
and lifted her in their automobile and drove her by chance to Berlin, which was our home. They didn't know it. And dropped my mother off in Berlin. Not only that, they dropped her off very close to where she wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> It's the most extraordinary situation. There she was, and, and, and her friends, uh, who were the ones where I had spent my last days, um, had been from her first marriage to her first husband, who was killed in World War I. And uh, my two sisters were from that marriage, and I was the one of her second marriage. So she. Uh, um, was greeted by them with wild happiness. Uh, that is where I had spent uh, two weeks before I turned myself in. They were very reliable, wonderful people. And as it would be after two happy days with these two friends, the poor uh, the old general who was thrown out by Hitler uh, was uh, shot at uh, by someone. We don't know whether it was who it was. And uh, so the two had to go to the doctor's house and were not movable. And we were then left in this other place alone. The way, the way my grandmother got released, though, was really, I think Mom would get to this point. Yeah, but I forget something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about nine or ten years ago, General de Gaulle's, President de Gaulle's niece wrote a book, and she had also been at this camp um, in the women's political prison part where my grandmother was. And she wrote of um, the Red Cross, Count Bernadotte from Sweden, who was the head of the Swedish Red Cross arranged with Himmler, of all mm -hmm. people, for 45 or 50 of the women to be released, and they were sent to Sweden or Denmark. My grandmother didn't go there, but somehow in this release, we think that's how she got out, because we don't really know how she happened to get out with a dismissal, you know, a, a piece of paper saying she was legitimately out of there. Um, but that's, that's the best thing that we can guess. Uh, that, that's really a very uh, wonderful story. Uh, uh, I, I forgot to mention that about it all, all morning, but that is 90. <laughs>